guys so first i just want to say a really quick thank you we've hit 300 subscribers i think it's at 303 now i know that's not a lot compared to most youtube channels but to think that 300 people are enjoying what i'm doing or hopefully being inspired to make something that still means a lot to me 300 is a lot of people it's been a while since i've uploaded any videos and the thing is i actually have two projects that are almost done I've got both of them, they're like right on the edge of being done, but a couple weeks ago, um, my husband's Nana passed away, so we've been kind of dealing with that, um, and it was a very close family, so it was hard on everyone. We, we lived next to her for about a year, not too long after we got married, and she taught me a lot of knitting. I'd go over several nights a week and would work on projects while he was at work. And she taught me a lot. So, we were all kind of dealing with that. And then, of course, at the funeral, I caught a cold from one of the little buggers running around. And, and then I realized this week, like today is Thursday, and my first craft fair is next weekend, and I am not ready. I'm like, no, I had at least a month, and now I only have a week. So, I'm trying to get myself organized again. I haven't really been working on too much. Um, and I also came into some new yarn from Nana. And I wanted to show you guys that. Because there is some really cool yarn in there that I've never seen before. And it's like really nice stuff that I would never be able to afford on my own. Like, even if I had that money, I wouldn't spend it on a skein of yarn. So, it's really nice stuff. I want to show you guys. Okay. It's cutting off the top of my head. But I don't think anybody cares about that. So, this is actually all yarn that I got. Um, big bag, box. This was yarn she'd given me before, and I got this tote and this tote full, and then the footstool. So, I went through and I kind of got like all of the really special stuff and put it in here, kind of like she had it. Because a lot of it is like wool, straight wool. Like, this kind of stuff a lot of this just straight up wool there's a place in Maine Romney Ridge where they grow it and shear it and spin it and dye it and everything right in Maine and she ordered a lot of stuff from them so that's all mostly 100% wool and in here there's a few different ones like look at the colors in that You can see it's very like earthy colors. This is 100% alpaca from Chile. 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 So that's beautiful. And then it's not like a huge skein. But I think there's like one, two, three. I think there was seven skeins in there. So that's really nice. Um, I was really excited to get all the alpaca because the wool. Like, my skin is really sensitive to the wool. She explained it to me once. It's like, like, the fibers have these microscopic, like, if this is the the strand of wool, if you get it hot, it, like, relaxes it and has all these little shafts that open. She said, like, little clams. And if your skin is really sensitive, it can feel those. And that's why it itches more. That's why some people are just, it scratches. And I have a sweater she made me that's 20% wool, and it, I have to have my skin covered underneath because it's just so bad. So I was really excited for all of the alpaca because that, I don't think it's going to bother me. I've never really worn much alpaca, but it's exciting. Um, this one is actually just 100% wool, but I love these colors. The brand is Noro. This one's made in Japan. And I just love the color schemes on those ones. Because this is something you could make a hat and you really wouldn't have to do much. You could just do a plain stitch all the way around and it would come out beautiful. So I've got a couple different colors of that. I've got these ones. Which whenever she bought yarn, she always bought like enough colors with a project in mind. Now this is Savannah brand Organic Comfort. 50% Merino, 20% Organic Cotton, 15% Linen, and 15% Soya Fiber. I'm not positive soya fiber. I assume it's just from like the soybean plant. But it's really, really soft. 
And the merino wool, I don't... The merino wool is softer than normal wool. I don't know if that's... If that will bother me or not. But aren't those pretty colors? They're so springy. I'll probably save it and do something in the spring with those ones. Um, I got a couple of these. And Anna was always very organized. She kept everything labeled and bagged up. I'll take that out. And this is wound really tightly. But this is 100% pure silk. And it feels like it. It feels so smooth. What's the yardage on that? 125 meters. And there's two... Two and a half-ish. She had that one that she'd started. 25, 250. So probably 300 yards. I mean, it's fairly small. That's a small one. It calls for a four millimeter. Yeah, so a size six knitting needle. So it's pretty small, but man, it's soft. And I don't know. I don't have plans for most of this. But that's okay, because I don't want to use it all up at once. She has some silk. This one's super pretty. Cherry Hill yarn. 50-50 silk and merino blend. This is so soft. I just got some really pretty colors in there. Just soft colors. This would be pretty in the winter. You know how everything's kind of gray. Like it would add just a little bit of color without being overbearing. And these ones are also alpaca. But this is like the hairy kind of alpaca. Like the hairy kind of yarn. So I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. But there is three skeins of the black or dark gray and then two skeins of the lighter gray. And this is from Winslow, Maine. 100% alpaca. 110 yards in each of them. So there's 550 yards there. So I could do something pretty big. It's not tightly wound. That's just like a one ply. But it's soft. Then... Big skein of this. I think this is merino. 65 merino. 30% mohair. And... 5% silk. Two ply. And usually the mohair is the stuff that's like super fuzzy. I don't really like it. Like, I don't like the feel of it. I don't like working with it. But this is not. You can see that it's pretty smooth yarn. That's a big skein too. Four ounces. Doesn't say the yardage, but it's four ounces. Um, I got a couple skeins here. Those are both 100% silk. This one. Hmm. So I had to take this one. It was wound up kind of like this, but it was really loose. And so I put it in the winder thing to wind it into a cake. And her cat, at some point, had chewed through it. So I had to stop, and it took me about two hours to get this wound up. But you can see the colors there. It's very, very thin. It's like a lace weight shawl. I think this is intended to make a shawl. But this is, get ready, it's called Lace Weight Possum. 40% merino, 40% possum, 20% silk, 480 yards. Like possum, first of all, how do they get possum fur? Is it a fur or a fiber? I don't know. How do you get that? Does somebody like farm possums for their fur? And I've heard they're kind of nasty animals. Like, they're not very nice. Like, how do you get up there and get that? I'll have to look into that. So that one's different. Like, possum. That's 40% possum. Of course, Nana had possum yard. <clears throat> um... A couple skeins of this. This is 65% cashmere and 35% silk. And this is so soft. There's two skeins of it. 133 meters, 145 yards. So there's 290, almost 300 yards. It's pretty thin. But of course you got enough to do something. Maybe mittens. Because it's kind of thin, but that would be really soft and warm. Maybe I'll make some mittens with that one. 
Uh, there's a couple of these ones. This is 100% cashmere. And there's another cashmere one here I'll show you too. Have you ever seen a yarn fancy enough to come in a box? I have not. This is from Jaeger. I think it's Jaeger. And it's got a little card on the back. And cashmere is fine soft wool or down here from the undercoat of the cashmere goat, specifically. So one specific type of goat. The fineness and softness of these fibers, because it's only the undercoat, you know, if you will pet an animal, it's got like the, the thicker, coarser hair on the outside and then the soft, fuzzy stuff underneath. This is just the soft, fuzzy under stuff from a very specific type of goat. Coupled with relatively low world production, one goat produces an average of about 100 to 150 grams of this valuable down per year. And this is so soft. Uh, Jaeger cashmere four ply. Now it's 90% cashmere, 10% polyamide. And I know sometimes if you're using a natural fiber, no matter how nice it is, if it's super soft, you have to have something else in there to hold it together, to like grip it. But yeah, this is a 25 gram ball. So if you figure at least 20 grams of this is cashmere. And I probably won't ever use that. I'll probably put it up in display when I get a craft room again. But then this stuff, <clears throat> this stuff is 100%, what the heck, okay. These are 100% cashmere. 100% cashmere, two ply, 50 grams, 437 yards, because it's very thin, it's a lace weight. 50 grams, so if you think of one goat produces two to three of this per year, they feed in a goat an entire year and farm it for two or three of these. That's just crazy. And then these ones, this one actually was a kit. It came with a needle. That's how far she got before she got annoyed with it and put it away. Um, this, this is the pattern. And this is why I don't agree to finish other people's projects. If they give me some yarn, it's like a started project, I'll usually pull it apart if I can, or cut it off, because I'm not trying to figure out that. This will be the last one I show you guys for now, just because I gotta go soon. But these are Angora. And this one you can actually kind of see, I can't tell you how soft this is. If you've ever pet like an Angora rabbit, you know exactly how this feels. Just imagine the softest rabbit you've ever touched in your life, and this is it. And there's different colors, a little piece of gray, she did something. And one of my cousins, her granddaughter, has a sweater. It's made out of something else, either wool or acrylic, I don't know. And then I think this is what she used to put um, two little bunnies on the front of it, because it's fuzzy like that, and this is just like, I'm so excited to use this stuff, but really I'll probably never actually use it because I'll never find a project that's good enough for it. And that's why it goes in the special yarn footstool. So hopefully I can get back on track. Um, Christmas is coming, so I really have a lot of projects that I need to get going on and get finished. Um, I gotta focus on the craft fairs first and get that stuff built up. And then I gotta finish the two projects I'm working on and then Christmas coming, so hopefully I'll be getting videos out more reliably for you guys. Because I miss doing them. I enjoy, enjoy doing them. And I will see you guys later.